how much has the financial um, system changed since the, uh, the financial crisis? Well, 10 years ago uh, will be the anniversary, obviously, this coming September of the crisis that happened in 2008 with the uh, collapse of Lehman Brothers. Uh, the financial system, I think, is much more resilient uh, since then. Uh, we have a lot more capital in the system. Uh, the system has been deleveraged tremendously. Uh, so I think the system is much more protected than it was before. You did, however, Francine, point out uh, one issue that all of us uh, stay up at night thinking about, and that's cybersecurity. Uh, and we at DTCC are very focused on that. Uh, we're obviously focused on trying to make certain that we protect all of the assets in the financial system that we are entrusted with. Yep. But equally, we're focused on what is the resiliency that we need to build in to all of our systems to make certain that we can recover uh, okay. from an attack. So we're very focused on that. We're very much dealing with that. We believe that there has to be greater cooperation between the public and the private sector yep. in the sharing of information uh, regarding cybersecurity. Uh, so those issues need to be discussed, and we need to have concrete action moving forward. Um, but Larry, how much intelligence sharing is it amongst the financial community about uh, you know cyber attacks or having some of the tools? Is there actually are people working at this together? They are indeed. Um, uh, FS ISAC in the U.S. as well as here in Europe is very active between the public and the private sector. Uh, individual companies are working together on a bilateral basis, sharing information. We at DTCC share that information with all of our members uh, in terms of what are happening with cyber attacks. So we believe that's something that uh, has to continue, uh, but we have to be more robust. We really need to make certain that uh, all of the information is being shared uh, and that we look to all of our legislatures to make certain that we have the right laws in place, not only to protect the institutions, but also to encourage uh, more sharing of information. Larry, do you worry about banking standards being different around the world? And if it is fragmented, what does that mean for cohesion? What does it mean for people being protected? Uh, we're always worried about making certain that all of the standards are uh, harmonized among all of the jurisdictions. Uh, we've been a great proponent of harmonization of all of the standards uh, between uh, the various jurisdictions. We know that the regulators, uh, the supervisors are in constant discussions regarding that, especially between the U.S. and, and European regulators. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those discussions take place on a bilateral basis at least twice a year. Uh, and, you know, we know in between then there are other discussions that are occurring. But we do believe that all of the regulators, both here in Asia as well as in the U.S., need to yeah. constantly be vigilant on the issue of yeah. harmonization. Yeah, and on uh, appointments of regulators from the U.S. administration, were they the right picks? They were indeed. Uh, we believe that the Trump administration has put in place a very strong team when it comes to the regulators that are dealing with the independent agencies in the U.S., uh, you have Christy and Carlo heading up the CFTC, the Commodities Future um, Trading Organization. Uh, you have Jay Clayton at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, you know, Jay Powell uh, at the Fed. And mm -hmm. you have Randy Quarles also at the Fed who heads their supervision. All of those are very strong leaders. Uh, they are very good in terms of what it is that they're doing. Uh, and they're very focused on making certain that we have the right regulations in place as we move forward.